raindrop or something. <laughs> of the clear blue sky. I think it's probably a drop came off the top of that I umbrella. Know. I know. Uh, good morning. We are looking for a quiet place, and this is quieter than in the house. But I think it's that pretty quiet the now. road grader is going to come by flattening our road again <laughs> in about 10 minutes. So let's hurry up. We're going to do hymn number 720. We walk by faith and not by sight. This, we're talking about appearances today and not judging by appearances. We walk by faith and not by sight. No gracious words we hear From him who spoke as none e'er spoke But we believe him dear We may not touch his hands and side Nor follow where he trod But in his promise we rejoice And cry, my Lord and God Help that, O Lord Now Rehoboam the son of Solomon reigned in Judah. Rehoboam was 41 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 17 years in Jerusalem, the city that the Lord had chosen out of all the tribes of Israel, to put his name there. His mother's name was Naamah the Ammonite. And Judah did what was evil in the sight of the Lord, and they provoked him to jealousy with their sins that they committed more than all that their fathers had done. For they also built for themselves high places and pillars and ashram on every high hill and under every green tree. And there were also male cult prostitutes in the land. They did according to all the abominations of the nations that the Lord drove out before the people of Israel. In the fifth year of King Rehoboam, Shishak, king of Egypt, came up against Jerusalem. He took away the treasures of the house of the Lord and the treasures of the king's house. He took away everything. He also took away all the shields of gold that Solomon had made. And King Rehoboam made in their place shields of bronze and committed them to the hands of the officers of the guard who kept the door of the king's house. And as often as the king went into the house of the Lord, the guard carried them and brought them back to the guard room. Now the rest of the acts of Rehoboam and all that he did, are they not written in the book of Chronicles of the kings of Judah? And there was war between Rehoboam and Jeroboam continually. Rehoboam slept with his fathers and was buried with his fathers in the city of David. His mother's name was Naamah the Ammonite. And Abijam, his son, reigned in his place. And now we're getting that. <laughs> or Abijam. No, I think it's. I think it'd be Abijam. Abijam. Yeah. Um, this is a sad story. So now, just to be clear, we've switched to the southern kingdom. Now it's the kingdom of Judah. So after Rehoboam became king and the kingdom split, the ten tribes go with Jeroboam. And that's in the north. We call that Israel. In the south, it's called Judah because it's primarily just the tribe of Judah, Judah and Benjamin. And uh, and Rehoboam ruled in the south. And so we were learning about Jeroboam the last several days, and now Rehoboam in the south 
and things are not much better. He does not set up uh, golden calves and say, here are your gods of Israel that brought you out of Egypt. But <laughs> here comes this machine. Uh, oh, just go a little closer. Yeah, but he, but he still has all these high places and temples and altars, you know, for other gods. And the people divide their attention. So they even have male cult prostitutes that people go and part of their worship is is sexual intercourse with the idea that you give God this is how many um, many pagan religions the concept works that you imitate what you want God to do you want the earth to bear fruit and be, to be fruitful and so you you hint to God hey uh, you know if you have sex with the earth and make it fruitful uh, it will bring forth crops and herds and flocks and things like that. Um, and so this is an especially, I, I think, probably especially egregious or offensive thing because it takes, first of all, it profanes. It takes what God made to be a really good thing and turns it into a filthy thing. Secondly, um, it means that even the women of the land are doing these awful things. and. Uh, and it's tantamount to the divorce and adultery, the unfaithfulness to God. It pictures, it pictures the unfaithfulness to God, who desires to be the husband of Israel and Judah, uh, the husband of us. Uh, once, in the New Testament terms, he wants us to be his bride, the bride of Christ. And so, false, false gods are a form of adultery. Uh, and this is why it says the Lord your God is a jealous God, not like a, uh, um, an angry husband, but rather uh, not not just possessive or domineering, but rather who loves his bride so much that he does not want her to go off after these empty things. And this is what Israel's doing, uh, trying fruitlessly to to get these imaginary gods to bring blessings, rain and sun and soil and uh, and so on. So they are still unfaithful, and now in Rehoboam's fifth year, he doesn't make it very long, the the king of Egypt, remember, uh, uh, Solomon had done everything so smart, he gets the, he, uh, the Pharaoh's daughter, he marries her, and all this stuff, and yet Pharaoh was at the same time um, uh, propping up these opponents to Solomon. And now when Solomon's gone, Jeroboam comes from Egypt and, and takes away those ten tribes. And now the king of Egypt comes and he says, hmm, you're not as powerful as your dad. And so I'm going to take some stuff. And he takes all the gold out of the temple and all, all the gold items out of the king's house. And what does Rehoboam do? Remember those golden shields they made? They were 300 shields of gold and so many shields of, that, of beaten gold that was like, like a gold surface. And just extravagant expense for this. Um, so having lost all the gold, Rehoboam has shields made out of bronze because it's you know, kind of the same color. And, and whenever he goes to the house of the Lord, uh, his, his royal guard carries carries these shields of bronze, you know, to escort the king and to bring him back. And as long as it looks good, that's what's important to Rehoboam. I want to look good when I go to the temple. He does not care about the quality, the nature of his worship in his relationship with God. As long as I look good, though, everybody will see me and they'll say, look at those shiny shields. How much do we do, how much of what we do is based on how well I look? Am I getting my best side, you know? <laughs> uh, uh, we worry about our appearance much sooner than we worry about the meaning of what we're doing or, or our heart. When we come to worship at God's house, uh, sometimes people don't come to worship at God's house because they're concerned with their appearance um, or the appearance of others. Uh, and they notice so-and-so is dressed really nicely. She probably thinks she's, right? 
Uh, or that guy, look at that tattoo. He probably is, and we don't know any of the what's, what's in the heart, what the worship means. Instead, we should be coming and listening for God's word and seeking the Holy Spirit and to be close to our Heavenly Father. So, Rehoboam, uh, Rehoboam dies and he's buried with his fathers in the city of David and his son reigns in his place. Will there be any more substance there? Well, not in this next generation, but there are there are some good things coming. And we wonder where did they come from? They keep naming the moms like it like they name uh, Rehoboam's mother. Twice. Yeah. I think that there's a hint there that this at least in some cases they have something to do with the direction their son goes. Uh, for good or for bad. Either way. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, how do we look to you? You do not see our face, our clothes, our hair. Uh, it does no good to strut or pose in front of you. You see our heart, our thoughts. Oh Lord, we are so glad that others don't see those things. Grant by your Holy Spirit that our hearts, our thoughts, may be turned toward you. Grant that our outward appearance would be changed by our inward appearance. In Jesus' name, amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. Have a great day.